Hi, thanks for joining me today. This is Cooking Together, and today we're gonna make a delicata squash dish. This is baked delicata squash with onions and rosemary. Just has a handful of ingredients. It also has um, uh, olive oil and salt in addition to the delicata squash, onion and rosemary, and that's it. I think I'm also gonna drizzle a little bit of hot water in the pan before we bake it and that'll help to steam it so you can get a little bit of water. But these are the things that you're gonna need. Uh, approximately two delicata squash, uh, one half of a large onion or one small onion, some rosemary, either fresh or dried like this, and then some olive oil. We're gonna drizzle it on. You probably need a tablespoon or two and some sea salt and that is it it's a very simple recipe and the reason why I wanted to show you how to make this today is because it is officially fall now and when you go to the farmers market or to the grocery store you're gonna see a whole bunch of winter squash coming out and some people already know how to cook it other people may look at it and say, well, I know how to use butternut squash, but not all of these other varieties. So I wanted to show you how easy it is to make a, a dish with this uh, delicata squash. So let's get started by cutting open the delicata squash. We're gonna take just a little bit off the top and the bottom. Don't wanna wreck my knife doing that though. And you can save these little tops if you want for putting in stock later on. I usually save them in the freezer. And now eventually we want to slice through the middle so that we can take the seeds out. But it's easier if you start by cutting through like this to make a smaller piece. And I oftentimes will use a towel and kind of rock back and forth until you can slice through. Now you've got two pieces that you can put down flat and that's much better than having this really tall thing that you stack like this. So each one of these, again, I'm gonna put my hand over the top, try to cut it through the middle. And then you can see all these seeds inside. Just some dried rosemary. And now you're gonna take a spoon and scrape out the seeds and the pulp. And I've seen people just take the seeds out and they leave some of the pulp in. And the problem with that is it can taste a little bit overripe or almost rotten. So you wanna get that pulp out so that you get the nice, clean squash taste without the pulp kind of interfering with that. And I've noticed that if you use a spoon, like this one that I have that is very thin, it's not a thick layer on the edge. If it's got a nice sharp edge to it, it's much easier to take out take out the pulp. So try with maybe a couple different spoons that you have and see how that goes. And I've just got one squash here because I already had part of another one cut. So you can go ahead and cut your other squash if you have two. And I'm actually gonna check, I have another one of these in the oven that I wanted to use as a swap out today so you don't have to wait 30 minutes or so. I'm gonna check on that in just a minute. And then when you're done scooping out the seeds and the flesh, then you can put these flat down on the board and we're gonna slice them that way. I'm gonna check something in the oven. Fork. A little more 
ton. Okay, so when you are checking to see if your squash is done, you can stick a fork in the squash and if it goes through easily, it means it's soft and it's done. If it's not, then cook it a little longer. Okay, so now we've got the squash flat side down and I'm gonna do pieces that are about, about a half, you know, somewhere between a quarter and a half inch. The smaller you slice them, the quicker they will cook, but they will also fall apart easier if you cut them really thinly. And if you're having trouble slicing through this, you can put your hand on top. And also the more you use the back end of the knife that's closer to your hand, that can make it easier to go through something that is tough. Just always keep your hand that you're not cutting with away from the blade, just in case it slips. You can either use the claw grip like this and hold really firmly and have your fingernails tucked under. Or if that's difficult to do, you can put your hand on top and that also helps give you some extra leverage. But having things flat side down is one of the most important things. If you try to cut with this um, on the round side, it's just going to rock back and forth. So we're going to try to avoid that. Okay, so now we've got delicata squash ready to go. Next, we're going to add some onion. Ginger Snap's trying to get up. Ginger Snap is trying to get up here to see what we are cooking. And I don't know if you're into gardening, but if you are, you could try to save some of the seeds if they look nice and plump and juicy. I saved these the other day thinking it might be fun to try to at least sprout them, see what they look like. And then if they're doing really well, I'll probably have to wait until uh, late next winter to, to try growing these. But I have had luck with some butternut squash seeds. I think I still will. Yeah, I still have one. I still have two small butternut squashes out of the batch that I got from growing it from a seed that I got from the grocery store from an organic butternut squash. So it's really cool when you can do that. So the onion, you want to slice off the root end and the top end, just a little bit from the top and the bottom, slice in half and then peel off the paper so that you have a half just like this one. And then I'm going to show you a crescent moon cut. There's actually two different ways you can slice an onion to get rings or crescents. I'm going to go with the ridges of the onion. So it's kind of a radial uh, pattern. You could also, this is a little easier to do it this way. You can go perpendicular to the lines that are on the onion and do rings. And that's actually a little bit easier, but I kind of like the way the crescent moons look. So let me show you how to do that just in case you want to. So I'm using the claw grip and I'm slicing pretty small slices. These are about maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch. And now since we want to keep slicing roughly down instead of towards ourselves, I'm going to rock this onion forward a little bit so that I can continue to hold it. And this is the part that I consider to be advanced because you have to have a really tight grip on the onion while still curling your fingers under, keeping them safe. So you'll see that these look a little bit more like a crescent moon. Sometimes these are called fajita cut onions. And I'm just going to separate them out a little bit. Okay. 
Okay. And then I'll add these squash. I used to teach a class at the Natural Bacurian when that school was open called Knife Skills. And whenever I could get delicata squash, I would include it in the Knife Skills class. And we would cut onions in all kinds of ways. So we would have some crescent moons on hand. They would learn how to deal with this uh, type of winter squash and slice it. And then we would make some dishes out of the vegetables that we just cut. And this was one of the ones, and I haven't really made it since those days. So it's been at least a few years, hard to believe. So now I'm gonna drizzle everything, or the uh, onions and squash with olive oil. And I'm, this comes out really slowly because of the type of spout that I have. You could use a big spoon. I just have a little spoon here, but that's okay. Kind of toss that around so that they are evenly coated. And then I'm gonna add some salt. I would say for about two delicata squash and a half of a large onion, you would probably need about a half teaspoon of sea salt, but if you were doing some pinches, I would say two to three large pinches where you take a large pinch with your hand. You do need a bit of salt so that they will have some flavor. You want to bring out the natural sweetness of these vegetables, which is what will happen when you bake vegetables. You could also do this recipe roasted, so it would be a higher temperature. And I forgot to remind you, this was on the, um, shoot, forgot to remind you, this was on the, the uh, Facebook page, but if you're cooking along with me, you wanna preheat your oven to 350. So go ahead and do that if you're cooking live with me right now. Preheat your oven to 350, make sure there's nothing in your oven. I store some of my cast iron skillets in my oven, so I always have to take those out when I'm preheating the oven for something else. Now I just put the dried rosemary in. Usually I use fresh rosemary that I chop up. So, sorry, I was talking, I forgot to tell you. I've got some rosemary that I dried right on the stem and it's really easy to take off the leaves from it. And you could either crumble it up or you could chop it up. When it's dried, it's really easy to crumble. But if it's fresh, you wanna take the leaves off of the stem like this from the top to the bottom and then give those a quick chop right now. So you want those to be finely chopped and then you can sprinkle them on. I would say about two teaspoons of freshly chopped uh, rosemary or you can eyeball it like I did. You don't wanna overdo it with rosemary, but I think this is gonna be fine. I, this is from about one stem of rosemary that was about uh, maybe three to four inches long. Okay, I'm gonna go check my swap out in just a second. I have an oiled glass baking dish. You could also use a metal baking dish or a parchment lined uh, sheet pan. The important thing is that you have one that's about the right size so it's at least half full. Let's see. Leave this here for a moment. See the steam on there now. And then one thing that I think I will do is just put maybe a tablespoon or two of hot water on the bottom, which will help it to start steaming. So it doesn't have to wait for the juice of the vegetables to, you know, to develop, come out of the vegetables before it starts cooking. So now I'm gonna cover it. If you were roasting these, you would do a higher temperature, 400 to 425. 
Um, what else do I want to tell you about? Did you get a shot of this, Nelson? Yep. Okay. I may want to. I want to take a picture of that later. Like that. Okay, so I'm going to cover this with foil so that the steam will collect inside the dish. That's really important when you're baking it so that it doesn't dry out. When you're roasting, you're doing a much high temperature, cooking it for a much shorter time. It's going to brown. These are going to be a little bit more soft when they come out instead of crispy. it needs about 30 minutes to cook. When you take it out of the oven and you want to check it, remove the foil from as far away from you as you can. Do you see that steam that's coming out? I don't know if you can see that, but that is a lot of steam and that could definitely burn you right in the face. If I were to just lift it and look at it like this, I've done that so many times. I'm trying to learn not to do it. So, so this has been in the oven for about 35 minutes. I didn't put any water in, in with it to start, so it took a little bit longer to get started, but it looks really good. It's soft throughout. If I take a fork, I can put the fork in it, and I'm maybe gonna cut this into a few little pieces so that I can try it when it cools off a bit. Mmm. I actually think it needs just a touch more salt. And I like the natural sweet flavor of the delicata squash and the onions together. But if you want to have it a little sweeter, go ahead and add a drizzle of maple syrup. That's a nice fall flavor. And you probably only need a teaspoon or two. And it'll be a nice, um, you know, a nice complement to these flavors. So I encourage you to make um, baked delicata squash as soon as you can find one in the store. And this month in Cooking Together Supper Club, in case you haven't heard of that, I'm doing a, an online supper club for all of us that can't have a lot of dinner parties right now or any dinner parties unless it's outside, socially distanced. We can do a lot virtually right now. And so... I'm doing a cooking together supper club. We've been going since the middle of April and this month the theme is bowls. So we're doing fall bowls. They're going to be colorful, um, easy to make, uh, with really, really delicious sauces. I'm kind of focusing on, uh, dressings and sauces for these bowls so that each week you'll get a different sauce recipe that you can learn and have in your repertoire. And we'll be using seasonal vegetables and other ingredients that you can find locally. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So I'll, I'll be posting some pictures from that here and there. But if you want to check that out, you can just go to my website, cookloveheal.com. And there's a link on the very top banner for cooking together. Or you can go to online classes and it's right there. So... I hope that you'll sign up for my newsletter so you can find out about different cooking shows I'm doing. Um, let me know if there's anything I can do for you. I've been doing a couple of online workshops for businesses around town. I'd love to do that for a birthday party or any kind of virtual event that you're having where you need something having to do with wellness or just you wanna prepare a meal together. It's really, really fun. And one more thing I want to mention is that the fundraiser that I'm hosting for the World Kitchen, um, World Central Kitchen, is still going on through October 4th, and we've raised over $500. I upped the goal to $750 because I know they need every penny. 
They go to places um, around the country and um, internationally, but right now they're focusing on places where there are wildfires, hurricanes, flooding, and even places where kids are not getting school lunches right now, like New York City. They have worked there during COVID to make hot meals. These are not just, you know, packaged meals. They make them right there, set up a big tent or food trucks. They've done everything you can think of to work in communities that have, um, you know, have a big need for food. And they're, they call themselves the food first responders. So if you could donate $5 to the cause or anything that you can manage, that would be wonderful. I'd really appreciate it. And I know all the people that are in need of food right now will appreciate it too. So you can find a link for that. I'm going to um, put a, another link to the fundraiser under this video so it's easy to find, but it is on my Facebook page too. So thank you so much for watching today and uh, bon appetit, happy cooking.